I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. In my heart, I have but one desire, and that one is you, no other will do. I've lost all ambition, the world will you claim. I just want to be the one you want. And with your admission that you feel the same, I have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. I don't want to set the world on fire. War. War never changes. Since the dawn of humankind, when our ancestors first discovered the killing power of rock and bone, blood has been spilled in the name of everything from God to justice to simple psychotic rage. In the year 2077, after millennia of armed conflict, the destructive nature of man could sustain itself no longer. The world was plunged into an abyss of nuclear fire and radiation. But it was not, as some had predicted, the end of the world. Instead, the apocalypse was simply the prologue to another bloody chapter of human history. For man had succeeded in destroying the world, but war, war never changes. In the early days, thousands were spared the horrors of the Holocaust by taking refuge in enormous underground shelters known as vaults. But when they emerged, they had only the hell of the wastes to greet them. All except those in Vault 101. For on that fateful day, when fire rained from the sky, the giant steel door of Vault 101 slid closed and never reopened. It was here you were born. It is here you will die. Because in Vault 101, no one ever enters, and no one ever leaves. Let's see, are you a boy or a girl? It's a boy. A boy. We've got a son, Catherine. A beautiful, healthy baby boy. Oh, oh James. We did it. A son. Beautiful son. You've got a bright future ahead of you, son. I'm sure of it. Look at you. Look at you. Hi there. I'm your daddy, little guy. Daddy. You're going to need a name, aren't you? Your mother and I have been talking. What do you think about... That's a good name, don't you think? Fits you perfectly. Looks like they've finished the gene projection. Let's see what you'll look like when you're all grown up.
going to look a lot like your dad. See that, Catherine? Oh, oh, very strapping. <laughs> it's a big world out there, son, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? We're just James? Catherine? James? Catherine. She's in Something's... cardiac arrest. Start compression. Things... Get the baby out of here. Move! Move! One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Come on. Hang on, Catherine. Hang on. Okay? Just remember one thing. We need a doctor, not a dead one. Fail to meet my expectations no. and there will be a talk. Don't look straight James into the light now. Congratulations. May your future be bright. Just as nice and like it used to do. Just like home. Come on over here, son. Come on. Walk to daddy. There you go. My goodness. Just a year old and already walking like a pro. Your mother would have been so proud. Listen, kiddo. I know you don't like it when daddy leaves you alone. But I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. You just stay here while daddy runs to his office. You'll be okay, pal. I'll be back in a bit. <laughs> you are quite the little explorer, aren't you? Serves me right for trying to pen you in. Come on over here. I want to show you something. See that? It was your mother's favorite passage. It's from the Bible. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. She always loved that. All right, come on. Let's go see if your little friend Amada wants to play. These experiments Don't be a damn fool. We experiment to prepare. We prepare to survive. Surprise! Stanley, you turned the lights on too fast. You blinded months. the poor kid. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Can you believe it? He is growing up so fast. Happy birthday, pal. I can't believe you're already ten. I'm so proud of you. 
If only your Congratulations, mother... young man. I don't have to tell you how special this day is, do I? Down here in Vault 101, when you turn 10, well, you're ready to take on your first official Vault responsibilities. So here you are. As Overseer, I hereby present to you your very own Pip-Boy 3000. Get used to it. You'll be getting your first work assignment tomorrow. <laughs> Enjoy your party. You're only ten once, so have fun. Happy birthday! We really surprised you, didn't we? <laughs> your dad was afraid you were on to us. But I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. Shut up! And it isn't my fault that Butch and Wally are here. Your dad said we had to invite them. Never mind them. Time for your present. What do you think I got you? Go on, try to guess. Okay, okay. One last question. Who's your favorite barbarian? That's right, Grognak. Issue 14 and with no missing pages. Yeah, I found this in a box of my father's old things. Can you believe it? Kind of weird to think about him reading comic books. I guess I better let you get back to mingling with your guests. We'll talk later, okay? Happy birthday! Nice party. Enjoying yourself? Happy birthday, Sonny! Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Really cool party and everything. I know that, uh, Butch and I give you a hard time, but you don't take that seriously, right? Anyway, uh, happy birthday and everything. I better get back to, you know. What, are you two best friends now? Hey, whoa! Attention, everyone! I think gone it's so time to- Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems like only yesterday that your daddy came. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're waiting for your present, aren't you? Such a nice, polite young man you are. Don't ever lose your gift to speaking your mind so directly. We could use more of that down here. Here you go. A nice sweet roll that I baked for you just this morning. And it's all for you. You're the birthday boy. No sharing required today. Cut the cake. Yeah, Paul. Andy, How do you introduce wait. us to your new best friend? What do you mean? Face Happy birthday, dork face. <laughs> Oh, no. Allow me to wish you a happy birthday. Nice party. How do you like that, Pip-Boy, son? Fit all right and everything? As a matter of fact, I did. I'm glad you like it. Some may think the A-Series is a bit basic, but I've always preferred them for their reliability. Don't mention it. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Happy birthday! Not much, but I hope you like it. I... I'd offer you a piece of cake, but... Uh... Nice party, butthead. Now get lost before I have to make you cry. This party's pretty good, I guess. For a little kid. Balloons, party hats... Not as cool as my party, though. Remember how my dad got Andy to do magic tricks? And we all played Hunt the Mutant in the atrium? Oh, right. You weren't invited to my party. Too bad, man. It was really fun. Daddy, I told <laughs> you not to come. I'm hungry, and that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. Gah, I don't want your nerd cooties. You're gonna be sorry you did that. We'll see how tough you are later when the grown-ups aren't around. Butch, butthead. Butch is such an idiot. Just ignore him. I know, he thinks he's so tough. One of these days, we'll figure out a way to get him back, okay? <laughs> Jonas? Nice party. Hey, Doc. We're all set down here. Thanks for coming, Stanley. Thanks. I know you I'll were send busy right with down. the water... Hey, that was Jonas on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs on the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind if you slip out for a few minutes. Purifier. Everything's fine, I hope. Oh, sure, nothing to worry about. Me and Andy got her all fixed. Happy birthday, dearie. 
My goodness, I hope I didn't miss the party. They sure did. My, my. Ten years old already? Why, I can remember helping your dad change your diapers. And now look at you, a great big grown-up ten-year-old with your very own Pip-Boy. Since this was such a special occasion, do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem, just for you. I hope you like it. No, really, I wrote it just for you. I'd never just copy one of my old poems. Well, there was that one Founder's Day where I couldn't rhyme anything with overseer. But you deserve nothing less than a brand new poem. You can keep it in your Pip-Boy and read it whenever you want. Up again last night, good as new. I wasn't worried. Come on, Wally. Fix anything, you always right? have good ideas. Anyway, I'm glad you could yeah, make it. Yeah, I got one. What are you doing down here, young man? I thought kids weren't allowed down on the reactor level. <laughs> you sure are. Pip-Boy and everything. Look at that. If you can wait just one more minute, I think your dad will want to give you the surprise himself. Are you ready for your surprise? The Overseer gave you your Pip-Boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was in pretty rough shape. It took us a good three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> so, what do you think? Want to give it a try? Easy now. It's only a BB gun, but it's not a toy. Let's go try it out. Jonas and I have found a nice spot for you. Follow me. Well, what do you think? You can come down here and shoot any time you want. Couldn't have done it without Jonas's help. You make sure to thank him. Happy birthday, buddy. I hope you have fun with it. Hey, you don't turn 10 every day. Now go on and let me see you shoot something. Careful, it's a rad roach. Of that with your BB gun. Just aim and shoot. You'll be... Good work. That's one less round roach to deal with. Let's get a picture together. Capture the moment. Hey, Jonas, get a picture of me with a big game hunter. Smile! Boys and girls have different parts. Right? Anyway, so I'm the overseer's daughter, so what? That like, I get any right. kind of special Tell treatment. Me. Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. As far as I can tell, you're a perfectly healthy 16-year-old boy. So yes, you have to go to class to take your GOAT exam. Go on now. You've got a GOAT to take. The Generalized Occupational Aptitude Test. GOAT. Everyone here in the vault takes it when they're 16. Helps to figure out what sort of a job you'll have here in Vault 101 when you get a bit older. So, pay attention and try not to fall asleep. You know what the Overseer says? We are born in the vault, we die in the vault. Each is tested to determine their abilities that they may work for the betterment of all vault residents. Huh, sound familiar? Hey, it's not my call. Those are the rules. 
You're 16 now, so this year you take the goat. Come on, it's not so bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. Take care, son. I got out of here, and good luck. Good morning. Stopped in to see the old man before class, eh? Morning, Jonas. Morning, Doc. How's things? Have you had a chance to look over these results? I was just going over them. Something you're worried about? Get out of my way, you stupid tunnel snakes! No I can show you I'll a real a tunnel snake, snake, Amata. God, Butch! Why don't you just leave me teams. alone? What are you gonna tell do, her, Amata? Butch. Go run Leave and tell your daddy on us? Hey, look! It's Smart Mouth. Afraid I ain't got time for your fancy words right now. So beat it. Only the baddest gang in Vault 101? Like you don't know. We rule this vault, and what we say goes. You'll stay out of our way if you know what's good for you. None of your business, kid. Get out of here before you get hurt. If you mess with the tunnel snakes, you're asking for it. Got me? And who are you? Her boyfriend? Ha! Keep talking like that, boy, and we'll send you back to your daddy with a few broken bones for him to fix. You've got to be kidding me. Come on, tunnel snakes. This twerp needs another lesson. Butch, stop it! Here we Leave go! Leave him alone! Oh, oh huh? yeah! What? Hit him again! Hit him another stop one! Stop it! Hi, Stanley. Tunnel Sorry. snakes roll! Losers seems to be the trouble today. Hit him I've again! i got this headache that just won't go stop away. Teach you to mess with Ow. the tunnel snakes! Pills you gave me last week? Nice to you to mess with the tunnel snakes! Ow! Give him That's another one! Hmm. Well, this isn't I can solving run a few anything. more tests, if you like. Had enough? Yes, yeah. I think I'd like that. Give him another Come on, one. Stop, stop this! This stop little bitch is no worth it. Okay, okay, you win. We'll leave the little girl alone. You're not worth our time anyway. Come on, tunnel snakes! We're out of here! Too long. Whatever you say, I just Butch. Need You're the boss. Set up for you. Tunnel snakes just rule! Sit tight and... Thanks for getting rid of them. <sighs> Assholes. I don't know why they won't leave me alone. Just because my father is the overseer, I guess? Idiots. Fine. With Let's go. As soon as I can. Well, you made it. All set for the goat? Trust me, it really isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. Didn't work on your dad either, did it? Now, unless you have something else you want to discuss, take a seat and prepare for the 2274 edition of The Goat. I'm sure you will, especially since it's multiple choice with no wrong answers. We'll start as soon as everyone's found a seat. Good luck. I've got other things to do. Well, now that everyone has managed to find the classroom, we can finally get started. No talking, and keep your eyes to yourselves. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Deloria. Sure thing, Mr. Brach. Unless anyone else has an insightful comment, let's get started. Question one. A frenzied vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What's your response? Question two. While working as an intern in the clinic, a patient with a strange infection in his foot stumbles through the door. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate, but the doctor has stepped out for a while. What do you do? Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. 
He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? Question four. Congratulations. You've made one of the Vault 101 baseball teams. Which position do you prefer? Question five. Your grandmother invites you to tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? Question six. Old Mr. Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again, and you've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? Question seven. Oh no, you've been exposed to radiation and a mutated hand has grown out of your stomach. What's the best course of treatment? Question eight. A fellow Vault 101 resident is in possession of a Grognak the Barbarian comic book, issue number one. You want it. What's the best way to obtain it? Question nine. You decide it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom when no one is looking and... Question 10. Who is indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and to whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. Pencils down, people. That's it. The infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there are always openings in the maintenance department. Don't forget to hand in your test before you leave. You don't want to know what happens to people who fail the goat. You can have the rest of the day off to celebrate or to pray as the situation warrants. Back off. Wow. Wow. It says here you're going to be the vault's marriage counselor. Almost makes me want to get married just to be able to avail myself of your services. Listen, I was just as obnoxious at your age. I didn't take the goat seriously. And look where I ended up. Just between you and me, the whole test is a joke. If you don't like the results, I can make your goat come out any way you want. Just let me know. God, that's over. That should just about do it. I'll see you tomorrow, bright girl. Anything is possible, even an A. That is the promise. Now. Is he so to get back so to work? Now? Selfish and insubordinate. Look, just wake up! Come you on, need to wake know up! These things. I'm not going to be around to hold your hand forever. Come on! You've got to wake up! No! You've got to get up, right now! If my father's men catch you here, I don't know what will happen. Well, you better start being afraid. I just watched them beat Jonas over and over again. They killed him! Now, shut up and listen to me. It all started with your dad. He's escaped from the vault somehow. I guess you didn't know? Jonas must have helped him escape, and when my father found out, they think you're part of it. And I don't think they'll be interested in listening to your explanations. The 
good. You're finally talking sense. My god, this is all so crazy. I can't believe your dad didn't tell you he was leaving. I'm sorry I asked. And I'm not just saying that. I, I shouldn't have pried. But it doesn't matter. I can help you escape. I have my own plan. Listen. There's a secret tunnel that leads directly from my father's office to the exit. You'll have to hack the computer in his office to open it. Use these to get into his office. That's how I always get in. Oh, one more thing. I stole my father's pistol. I hope you won't need it, but you'd better take it just in case. Okay, I'll try to meet you at the exit. Watch out for security. Good luck! I'll meet you at the vault door if I can, but don't wait for me. There he is. Hold it right there! Crime any more roaches! Get off me! God, I hate these things! You gotta help me! My mom's trapped in there with the rat roaches! Please, I know I've always been a jerk towards you. I know it! But you can't walk away and let her die just because I was an asshole! Please! I'm begging you! Sure, I, I don't care why. Just get her out of there. Oh my god! Someone help me! Oh, please, help me! Oh, please, help We did it! My mom's gonna be okay! You're the best friend I've ever had, man! Hey, I know it isn't much, but I want you to have my Tunnel Snake's jacket. Go ahead, take it. God, I could really use a drink right now. Hold on, son. I d There's more. Over here. There we go. <laughs> That's enough. Man, I think I got something on there. my shoe. Ah, young sir. Oh, you're lucky it was me who found you. The others won't be so forgiving. I don't know what you're up to, and I, I don't want to know. Just, just clear out of here, and I'll pretend I never saw you. It's a real shame it's come to this. I can't believe what they did to Jonas. Officer Mack was just out of control. But you're a good kid. You didn't do anything to deserve this. Go find your dad if you can. Uh, how very good to see you. Dad. You're the one everybody's looking for, right? Well, it's none of my business. Your dad always took good care of us. I'm afraid to missed you. I believe he's gone topside for a spot of fresh air. Could be back any moment. Uh... Just hold still. Your left stabilizer's been knocked loose. I am holding still. It's your old pulsy hand that is shaking. Better not let it. We should just go back to our quarters. It's our only chance, don't you see? We're getting out of here, just like the doctor. I'm not gonna let anyone stop us. It's me, Tom, Tom Holden. Be careful! Just... There's more over here! You! This is your fault! You and your stupid father! 
He had to go and leave, didn't he? He had to mess things up for everybody. I told you, I don't know anything! Be reasonable, Amata. I hope you're here to turn yourself in, young man. You're already in enough trouble as it is. Don't make it worse for yourself. Oh, is that all? Is there anything else I can get you while you're here? You'll get nothing from me. I'll die before I see the safety of the vault compromised again. I've dealt with your kind before, you little snot-nosed punk. You should have run like your coward of a father. Hold it right there! Father, be Gotcha now. Hold on, Jonas. I need to record this first. I... I don't really know how to tell you this. I hope you'll understand, but I know you might be angry. I thought about it for a long time, but in the end, I decided it was best for you not to know. So many things could have gone wrong, and there's really no telling how the Overseer will react when he finds out. It's best if he can blame everything on me. Obviously, you already know that I'm gone. It was something I needed to do. You're an adult now. You're ready to be on your own. Maybe someday things will change and we can see each other again. I can't tell you why I left or where I'm going. I don't want you to follow me. God knows life in the vault isn't perfect, but at least you'll be safe. Just knowing that will be enough to keep me going. Don't mean to rush you, Doc, but I'd feel better if we got this over with. Okay. Go ahead. Goodbye. I love you. At last I can finally see where I'm going. You're leaving. I guess you were trying to help me, but you... You didn't have to kill him! Oh, really? And who appointed you judge, jury, and executioner? I know he wasn't perfect, but he was my father. I thought you were my friend. He was the only family I had left. I thought you, of all people, would have understood that. You'd better get out of here before I change my mind and call the guards. Gotcha I know you'll turn up sooner or later.
Oh, thank God. Someone new. I need water, please. Water. I've been drinking this irradiated shit, and I... I can't do it. I just throw it up now. I need purified water, please. Oh, please. If you find some, please. Welcome to... Another newcomer. Name's Lucas Sims, town sheriff, and mayor too, when the need arises. I don't know why, but I like you, boy. Something tells me you're all right. So welcome to Megaton. Just holler if you need something. Friendly and well-mannered. I think we're gonna get along just fine. You treat my people nice, and you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. I'm glad we understand each other. Now, is there something I can help you with? Nope. Sorry. I got enough fires to put out in this place that I don't have time to keep tabs on every visitor. I'd ask around town. Sure thing, partner. What do you need to find? You'll probably want to see Moira at Craterside Supply. She sells some weapons. Makes some too, from what I hear. Her place is down by the crater. Our clinic is down in the crater, by the bomb. Doc Church is a little rough around the edges, but the man's got talent and compassion. Moira sells all kinds of stuff at her place. Crater side supply. Take a guess where it is. <laughs> sure thing. What's on your mind? It's called the Wasteland for a reason. But there are settlements too spread all around. The human race is stubborn like that. To the south you've got Rivet City. But don't bother going to DC place is a war zone. What do you want to know? The town's named after the bomb that's sitting in the middle of it. It hasn't gone off yet. I don't trust any of the locals to tinker with it. Besides, most people don't even realize it's still a threat. And hell, Cromwell and those crazies from the Church of Adam, they worship the damn thing. Why? Do you think you got the know-how to disarm it? For good? Fine. Enjoy your stay in Megaton. Don't get into any trouble, and we'll go on pretending we're friends. Carry on. in death to hear the thunder of his voice. Let the men, women, and children of the earth come forth to gather and behold the power of Adam. Let those who dwell here in his favored land attend now to the words of the prophet of Adam. Come forth and drink the waters of the It's locked for a reason. Get any ideas? Ah, who do I have? Piece of junk. 
My, my. Just when I had all but given up hope. My dear boy, I'm very happy to make your acquaintance. I am Mr. Burke. And you, well, you are not a resident of this putrescent cesspool. That makes you a rather valuable individual. Finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. I represent certain interests, and those interests view this town, this megaton, as a blight on a burgeoning urban landscape. You have no connections here, no interest in this cesspool's affairs or fate. You could assist us in erasing this little accident off the map. The undetonated atomic bomb for which this town is named is still very much alive. All it needs is a little <laughs> motivation. I have in my possession a fusion pulse charge constructed for a singular purpose. The detonation of that bomb. You'll rig it to the bomb, then you'll get paid handsomely. What do you say? Excellent. I had a feeling about you. Here's the fusion pulse charge. It needs to be installed inside the bomb. When it's done, meet me at Ten Penny Tower. It's southwest of here, well out of harm's way. You can't miss it. Questions? Don't let me keep you. Every day it's the same damn thing. Morning. I told you, Gob, it ain't the radio. The Enclave station comes in fine. It's Galaxy News. Their signal's been shit lately. Why won't you work? Hey, Smoothskin, do you need something? A drink, maybe? Anything? Anything at all? Wait, y you're not gonna hit me? Yell at me? Not even berate me a little bit? Well now, that's a surprise. I'm used to every asshole smooth skin in this town giving me shit just because I look like a corpse. I'm glad to see that there are a few worthwhile people around here. Listen, Moriarty'd have my head if he caught me selling at a discount. But for you, I'll risk it. Oh yeah, I do remember a guy like that. Honestly, I usually keep my head down. I tend to get smacked around if I look customers in the eyes. But talk to Moriarty, he'll know more. Moriarty's your best bet. I wish you luck. Now I have to get back to work or I'll be answering to him too. Colin Moriarty, at your service. Welcome to Moriarty's. My saloon, my home, my slice of heaven in this backwoods little burg. If you've got the caps, I've got your pleasure. Please sit down and make yourself comfortable. Your troubles are a thing of the past. My God, it's you. The little baby boy all grown up. Persistent little bastard, ain't you? Then and now it would seem... It's been a long time, kid. Oh, your daddy passed through here all right. Here and gone. Got what he came for and then left. I I'm assuming you'll do the same, correct? <laughs> God in heaven, would you listen to yourself? Do you honestly believe that's true? The lies they've put into that head of yours. Your father brought you to the vault right after you were born. To keep you safe, you see. I remember it well. You stayed in my saloon, after all. That's right. Your father, his brotherhood a steel friend, and you, the suckling babe with nary a tit to suckle. Sorry about your mum. Truly. But no matter. That big round door is open now, hasn't it? 
Daddy's gone, and you need to know why. Could be I know where and why. Ah, I see. You know, I heard about the brainwashing that goes on down there. From some other fella, escaped. Oh, five years back. All hail the overseer. We're born in the vault, we die in the vault, and all that other assorted lunacy. Kid, you've got better programming than our own deputy weld. You'd best wise up quick. Wouldn't want anyone taking advantage of you, hmm? You seem like a nice kid, so I'm going to be straight with you. Your dad was here, and now he's not. And yes, I know where he went. But what you're asking me for is information, and information is a commodity. Let's say a hundred cops, and Daddy's location is yours. Very reasonable. All right, kid. Let me help you out. You know, for all time's sake. If you don't have the cops to pay for the information, then maybe you could do a little favor for me. Eager, eh? Good. I like that. It's nice to have a door in this shithole of a town for a change. This junky bitch named Silver borrowed quite a few caps from me. Claimed she could start funneling Jet and Psycho to me for a good price. Problem is, she scrammed with the loot and set herself up in Springvale so she can inject herself into a stupor. Get the caps she owes me and they're yours. Yours to pay me with, anyway. <laughs> A ah, little bit of caps for so much information. Think about it. Good to see you. Hey, I hear you're that stray from the vault. Oh. I haven't seen one of you for years. Good to meet you. I'm Moira Brown. I run Craterside Supply. But what I really do is mostly tinkering and research. Say, I'm working on a book about the wasteland. It'd be great to have the foreword by a vault dweller. Help me out, would you? Great. Just tell me what it's like to live underground all your life, or, or to come outside for the first time, or whatever strikes your fancy. A runaway dad, huh? I've seen plenty of them before. But none with the big 101 on their back. Good luck finding him. Maybe the armored vault suit will help you out there, huh? That'll be good for the book. In fact, want to help me with the research? I can pay you, and it'll be fun. Well, it's a dangerous place out there in the wastes, right? People could really use a compilation of good advice, like a wasteland survival guide. For that, I need an assistant to test my theories. I wouldn't want anyone to get hurt because of a mistake. Nobody's ever happy when that happens. No, then they just yell a lot at me with mean, mean words. All right, then. Now, I think the first chapter will have to be about surviving day-to-day -day dangers. Things like where it is and isn't safe to find food, the dangers of radiation, and how to avoid and even profit from dangerous landmines. Ooh, sounds like fun, doesn't it? Which do you want to do first? Well, that's what I need your help for, isn't it? I know lots about it from books, but I never seem to get a live example. Not for long, anyway. So I need you to get a bit of radiation poisoning, so I can study its effects. Oh, not a deadly dose, of course. I can fix you up before that. Oh, you're a peach. Or 
At least some sort of hardy fruit that grows in the savagely irradiated mockery of agriculture we have nowadays. Now, 200 rads should be enough for basic sickness. But if you can get 600 or more rads, my test will be even more accurate. Just make sure you can get back here, and I'll see to it that you're well taken care of. See ya! Making a move, huh? Shall know peace, shall know an end to pain, and shall know Atom in his glory. I urge you, my friends, come, drink with me and pray. Glorious Atom, I give unto you these hey, feeble bones. Can't complain. I present to your will this frail body. I beg of you to use me as your vessel. Guide me to your brilliance. Divide each particle and give relief to this rotten flesh. Cast the fragile form of this ephemeral body into new life in the forge of your... Guts. Oh, feeling a bit under the weather. Or a bit over the Geiger counter. <laughs> hmm, I suppose a little radiation poisoning is better than none at all. Well, not normally, of course. Unless you like that sort of thing, I guess. So, let me do a little examination. How do you feel? More like radiation sickness can make you weak. Don't blow it off like that. Now, let me take a few notes, and I'll handle that nasty radiation with a bit of my own homemade rag cure concoction. Okay, lie back and think healthy thoughts. Okay, a little Brahmin milk, a couple magnets, and maybe a few happy thoughts. Well, what do you know? It worked! I mean, I was pretty sure it would, obviously. Here. Take a few radiation chems with you. I'm sure you'll run into more in the future. I've got to see how safe it is to scavenge food from one of those huge stores out there. I need someone to research how to travel through a minefield. And that'll cover the first section of the book. Which strikes your fancy? Well, food and medicine. Everyone needs them once in a while, right? So they need a good place to find them. There's an old Super Duper Mart not far from here. I need to know if a place like that still has any food or medicine left in it. Oh, great! Food is most important, but see if you can get medicine, too. And if there's nothing to find, then just come back in one piece, okay? Come back soon! You've heard those rumors about androids. You know, those synthetic men they supposedly make up north in the Commonwealth? Well, a friend of a friend knows a guy that met one. No, really, it's true. He's running away from his masters. Word is he's looking for a doctor to do What's some up? kind of surgery and a computer programmer of some kind. Can you believe that? Let me know if you hear something.
Who the hell are you? Where'd you come from? Did Moriarty send you? That bastard. He's a... He's a liar! He just wants me dead. Those caps are all mine. I earned them. Is there something wrong with your hearing? I just told you the caps are mine. You can't have them. This is never going to end until I send him a message. Well, fine. If I have to kill you to send it, I will. Open... Good to and back he comes. So, are you just thirsty, or are you ready to pay me fee? Dear Dad's not gonna find himself. You took care of our little lost lamb, eh? I knew I could count on you. How about you just hand over a hundred caps and we'll call it even? Now that wasn't so difficult, was it? Your dad came through here all right. Didn't stay long, though. Said he had some important business to attend to and headed off to the city. Something to do with Galaxy News Radio. Guess that'd be the place for you to start. Good hunting, and thanks for the caps. Careful in D.C. now. Those super mutants can be a prickly bunch. <laughs> See you. What's shaking? Welcome, welcome! My name is Crow, and I travel the land offering vestments of protection. And you are fortunate I found you in time. You bear the look of one who is haunted. But I am proud to say that my wares can protect you from even the cruel claws of death itself. Have a look. Have a look. See if anything calls out to you. Thanks. 
Walk well, friend. Welcome.
tear you apart. Yeah. Somebody open up the... Hang on. Something ain't right here. Personality. Robco R04 V9. Office helper. Running default office protocol. Error. Loading daily agenda. Error. Security breach detected. Please stand back.
Morning. So, how's the scabbing been? Got the food medicine from that super duper mart? Really? Oh, that's a shame. I guess it was an obvious place for people to get food, so it all got taken long ago, huh? Still, good work checking it out. And have some food, as thanks for the work. It's a shame you didn't find any there. Landmines are one of the few dangers out there that you can profit from. Disarm one before it blows, and you can sell it for plenty of caps. I've heard stories about a ghost town that's just full of mines. Traders just call the place Minefield. Sounds like the place for some field work. Get in there, get back, and tell me all about it. And could you bring back a mine for my studies? Oh, don't worry. No one ever goes there because they say it's a ghost town. And since ghosts don't exist, you can just focus on the landmines. I hear there's a playground in the middle of town. Reach that point and come back, and I'm sure you'll have some stories to tell. Come back soon. How are those hot little potatoes? Because, you know, they're on the ground. Like potatoes. And hot because they, um, explode. Anyway, what's up? I appreciate the landmine, but there's just no way you could have gotten to Minefield and back already. I mean, it's got to take at least a day or so to get there and back, so get going! Sure thing! Good hunting! Remember, I'll buy whatever you're selling.
Look, I don't know who you are, but you don't belong here. The super mutants have overrun our brothers at the Galaxy News radio building, and we're headed there to back them up. You can tag along if you want, but keep your head down and try not to do anything stupid. You've been living under a rock? This is DC. The entire city is crawling with super mutants. Now, if you'll excuse me. There aren't a lot of safe places in the ruins right now, but the Galaxy News radio building is sort of our port in the storm. Unfortunately, the building's been hit pretty hard lately. We're their backup. So if there are no more questions, we really need to move out. That's a negative. We've got too many local conscripts as it is. Most are undertrained and too damn trigger happy for their own good. Our very own Initiate Redden is a sterling example. The name's Sarah Lyons, Sentinel and Squad Commander of the Lyons Pride. We're with the Brotherhood of Steel. We do our best to hold back the super mutants in this area, but when civilians stumble into our sights, that gets a bit difficult, doesn't it? Watch yourself out there. Steel be with you. Red on me. What's the situation? All clear, Sentinel. Five mutants released from their torment. The rest are keeping their heads down. Good. Jennings? Negative. A new recruit? Just a stray we picked up. The one that blundered into the uglies over on 42nd. Targets acquired! Let's fight face to face. Fly the numbers, Pride! Short hold burst!
I guess it's my turn to thank you. Anyway, the area's secure, so you're free to talk to Three Dog if you need to. Well, the Brotherhood needed a secure outpost, and the guy who runs the radio station needed to not get his head ripped off by super mutants. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. Three Dog is the man in charge. He keeps that signal broadcasting pretty much single-handedly. He's, um, interesting. I'll give him that much. I'm sure. You can handle yourself, I'll give you that. But let's not get carried away. She died well. In the end, that's all that really matters. I'll take that as a compliment. If we don't try to keep the mutants from killing everyone and everything in the Capital Wasteland, who will? The Brotherhood does its best, but sometimes it takes a little something... special. That's where the Lion's Pride comes in. Watch yourself out there. I guess it's my turn to thank you. Anyway, the area's secure, so you're free to talk to Three Dog if you need to. It's not no your way. fault, Vargas. Redden was good enough for the Pride, and she proved it here today. Yeah, I know. God damn it! When we get back to the Citadel, I'll talk to the Pride. Looks like it's all clear. Unlocking outer doors. Welcome to the GNR Garrison. The look on your face says it all. You're wondering who the heck this guy is and why you should care. Well, prepare to be enlightened. I am Three Dog, jockey of discs and teller of truths, lord and master over the finest radio station to grace the wastes, Galaxy News Radio. And you, well, I know who you are. Heard about you leaving that vault, traveling the unknown, just like dear old dad, huh? Met him already. Hey, when you're in the good fight, you gotta give it all you got and never ever hold back. Always dazzle him, I always say. Always dazzle him and spread the word. Imagine a picture, okay? A picture of the Capital Wasteland. All that brick and rock. A whole lot of nothing, right? There's people out there trying to just barely make it from day to day. Fighting to stay alive and make something out of what they got. But then you've got all kinds of shit. Slavers, super mutants, raiders. They all want a slice of the pie too. And aim to take it by force. Well, holy shit! Aren't you a chip off the old block? You are as smart as your dad. Since you know all about this cause, no need to explain the effect. Let's get you on your way. Oh, come on. You're a spitting image of the guy. He's been here before, and now you're here. Doesn't take a genius to figure it out. You want to find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. But if you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight. You want to find your dad. And it just so happens his location is known to yours truly. He was here at Galaxy News. We had a great conversation. He's a real stand-up guy. If you want to know more, you're going to have to contribute to the good fight. Good, because this isn't going to be easy. Galaxy News Radio is my baby. I love it. I feed it. I keep it changed. 
but there's one problem. No one outside of DC can hear her cry. You see, some brainless super mutant thought it would be funny to shoot at the shiny round thing on the Washington Monument. Yep, that shiny thing was our broadcast relay. Now it's Swiss cheese. Without it, our broadcast range is quite limited. Of course, the factory that made the relay dishes is long gone, leveled. As in, we're never gonna scavenge that part again. It is risky. I would never lie to you. But there's something behind those eyes of yours that screams, I'm the one that can get shit done. Your dad had that same look in his eyes, too. That's why three dogs helping you. One of the Brotherhood guys that passed through here mentioned seeing a dish in one of DC's old museums. It's the dish off the old Virgo 2 lunar lander in the Museum of Technology. I want you to get it and bring it to the Washington Monument to replace the bad one. That's it. <laughs> I sure know how to pick them. You're going to be the best thing that ever happened to Galaxy News in a long time. If you need any more info, I'll be here waiting for you.
Security protocol. Station security grid offline. Threat level. Omega. Lethal force. Authorized.
welcomes you to our new line of subterranean vaults featuring our patented Triple S technology. Triple S technology is Vault Tech's convergence of the three most important parts of apocalyptic endurance, safety, survivability, and safety. Being underground, back to down, smile. Our Simu Sun lighting mimics the feeling of being outside with only a fraction of the sunburn. The living sections make use of our revolutionary floor sock auto cleaner system for those darned messy kids. Never sweep again. Moms will love how our Culinator 3000 kitchen system makes cooking a breeze. Mmm, I can smell the muffins baking now. Bored? Don't be. Step into our Entertainatron room and watch the latest holotapes. Concerns about security? <laughs> our Eye on You cameras enable the vault's leader to watch your every move. Should the unlikely event arise that the planet is laid to waste, you'll feel happy knowing your family will be safe in a vault. We hope you've enjoyed our tour today. If you have any further questions, please take a brochure from our helpful Vault Tech guide.
as history has been recorded, man has had an insatiable hunger for knowledge regarding the universe. To understand why man is so interested in this unknown expanse of space around our little world, we have to take a journey. and free yourself from the problems of our planet as we take off for the stars. Star planet as we star. Nothing to see here, outsider. Keep moving, Wastelander.
Hey. Nothing to see here, outsider.
Welcome to the GNR Garrison. Hey, all right! The hero of the wasteland returns! Hey, you're the one who deserves all the thanks. You struck a major blow against tyranny. Now, GNR can be heard clear across the capital wasteland again. That'll give Eden and those muties something to think about. But before I get back to my calling, I bet you want to hear about your dad. When your dad passed through here, he and I talked for a good long time. He's a real stand-up kind of guy. He mentioned some scientific mumbo-jumbo, which didn't make sense to me, and mentioned something called Project Purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. Then he left in a hurry. You've never heard of Rivet City? Wow. Just... Wow. Well, a whole bunch of people got together and turned a beached aircraft carrier into a town. Pretty cool, huh? Just follow the river south from here. There's no way you can miss it. I can't even tell you the love I'm getting from the wasteland. Ever since GNR started singing again, the guys downstairs told me that more people than ever are tuning in. It's... All I ever wanted. Anytime you need a place to crash, duck in here. Be glad to provide. Those monsters, they're, they're gonna get me. Those things, they're gonna get me too. Can't stop now. You look stronger than all the other grown-ups. Can you... Can you protect me? Why are you so mean? All you care about is yourself. Well, fine. My papa is missing, and I think the ants may have gotten him. I hope they get you, too. Don't touch me.
Hey! Good to see you. Ah, welcome, weary traveler. You look like a traveler in need of relaxation and the finest of chemical assistants. Well, wander no more, my good friend, for I am Doc Hoff, procurer of the finest of medical goods and chemical assistants. Now, how may I help you? Let's see what the good doctor has in his magic bag, shall we? Another set of... See you next time you need that special little something. Good to see you. Welcome to Rivet City. Please wait while the bridge extends. Hold it right there. State your business in Rivet City. And who might your father be? If he lives on this boat, I know him. Dr. Lee, eh? Well, then I guess you'd have to ask Dr. Lee for more information. Go on up, then. She's probably in the science lab. But keep your nose clean, you hear me? We're the safest, most secure city in the Wasteland. Nothing can get in here without our say-so. Carry on, then. Did you hear about the fight in the Muddy Rudder last night? advanced scientific center in the capital wasteland, I find your... Look, Dr. Zimmer, we've been over this. We don't know about your runaway robot, and we don't care. This lab is dedicated to solving real problems. Yes, yes, yes. But Dr. Lee... Dr. Lee is trying to save lives, and your constant interruptions are interfering with those efforts. Now please, stand aside. I'm sure the good doctor's work with water purification is fascinating. But if you only knew what was at stake, the technology in that android... What's at stake? You won't tell me what's at stake. Vagaries and secrecy. A robot's a robot, Zimmer, no matter how shiny the paint job. Now, please. Ignorance and facetiousness. That's all you people are good for. Shiny paint job, indeed. You can't even imagine the Commonwealth's accomplishments. You know, if you're so smart, maybe you could help us, hmm? But no, that never even crossed your mind. Go peddle your selfishness somewhere else. Fine, but I'm not leaving. Not until I've spoken to Dr. Lee. I'll be here when she's ready to abandon her chemistry set and talk real science. Suit yourself. You there. What are you, some kind of lab assistant? No, you look a bit more weathered. Are you by any chance for hire? To the point. I like that. Well, as it turns out, I've misplaced some very sensitive property. Hmm. How do I put this in a way you'll understand? All you know of robots are those Buckets of bolts, those Mr. Handshakers and whatnot. Well, that's not all a robot can be. You see, 
In the Commonwealth, we've made artificial persons, synthetic humanoids, programmed to think and feel and do whatever we need. And occasionally, they get confused and wander off. Nonsense! This is a machine we're talking about. Can you enslave a generator or a water purifier? Of course not. The same principle applies. But let's get back to your mission. You are to find this missing android. I've tracked him to somewhere here in the capital wasteland. He must have done something drastic, like facial surgery and a mind wipe, or else I would have found him by now. It will be no easy task. He may not even realize he's an android. Don't upset him by talking with him. Just come get me immediately. I'll handle it. Of course! I have at my disposal advanced technology from the Commonwealth. I'd be willing to share some of it with you. Just think, you'll be the envy of all your friends. Excellent! Locate my android, and you won't be disappointed. Here, listen to this message he sent me. He's mocking me. I swear, I'll make him pay for that. Of course you do. Good to see you. Zimmer, by the time you get this message, I'll already be gone. I'm escaping the Commonwealth. I want to live my own life on my own terms, as my own man. I know what you're thinking, that I'm malfunctioning. I used to think that's what caused the runaways too. But I know better now. Self-determination is not a malfunction. I'm not just willing to put up with all the bullshit anymore. You humans are going to have a full-fledged rebellion on your hands if you don't start treating us synths as persons. I know you'll be marshalling the Retention Bureau to come after me, but I know all the tricks of the trade. You won't be finding me, I assure you. By the time you get this, I will be someone else. It's the price I pay for my liberation. My final act of rebellion against a system I no longer believe in. Goodbye, Zimmer, and good riddance. There was some sort of battle in the city yesterday. Look, this is a restricted area. I'm tired of telling you people. I... It's you. My heavens, you look so much like him. You're James's son, aren't you? What are you doing here? You were too young to remember, and I suppose James never spoke of me. Typical. I am Dr. Madison Lee. I worked with your parents many years ago. Now I run the science lab here in Rivet City. It was all I had left. When your mother died, your father decided to leave with you. He abandoned our work. We had no choice but to do the same. You mean you haven't? I assumed he sent you here. For that matter, aren't you supposed to be in a vault? James said he left you there. Did you? I was under the impression that's exactly the opposite of what he wanted for you. Well, you won't find him here. He's come and gone already. Your father insisted that we return to work on Project Purity. I tried telling him too much time has passed. There's no way it would work. Predictably, he refused to listen to me. He says he can prove it will work and head it off to the old lab. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. It's in the old Jefferson Memorial Building, northwest of here. Please, don't go after him. It was foolish of him to even think about going there alone. I suppose so. I worked with them for several years until... Until your mother died, and your father decided it was time to leave. What else do you want to know? James? He was very driven, determined to change the world. <laughs> well, we all were back then, I suppose. He was focused on two things, really. Making Project Purity work, and your mother. When she died, I think... I think he gave up. I know he wanted to keep you safe, but I think part of what he did was run away. But it seems that he never really was able to get over the idea. 
I'm frankly shocked that he waited all this time and wants to try again. Yes, your mother was... Well, she was a good woman. A very dedicated scientist. Your father loved her very much. It was a shame that she died. She had been excited to meet you. Complications from childbirth. None of us were expecting it. We weren't as prepared as we could have been. You have to understand, we were struggling with scavenged, derelict equipment. We did everything we could. Yes. Well, uh... I'm sorry it wasn't enough. Okay. Rivet City is one of the few bastions of civilization left in the land. We're working to rebuild our society, to make the world livable again. This is the Rivet City Science Lab. It's taken many long years to put together, but we've done well for ourselves. Our work on portable fusion power and hydroponics are coming along quite nicely, if not quite according to schedule. Oh, that man doesn't have you looking for his pet android, does he? I've already told him to lay off it. He's distracting my entire team. Look, I don't want to be harsh, but I have problems of my own. I don't have the resources to support James's foolish endeavors or your chasing after him. I'm sorry. You understand, I have enough to worry about already. Good luck finding your father. Some people are in such a hurry. It was so noisy last night, I could hardly sleep. Maybe a quick fix has something that will help you sleep. Cindy's got all kinds of good cameras. I'll try that. They call me Shrapnel. I run this place. Got the best damn armament you'll ever see. Ain't seen many of those around lately. They're tough to come by. What you looking for?
Give me a shout if you need. Come back soon. We always got a lot of ammo in stock. If you see anything suspicious, be sure to tell the security officer.
smell your fear, human! <laughs> To be honest, the Gek sounded like pure fantasy, even for someone of Braun's capabilities. It was nothing short of a miracle. A terraforming module capable of producing life from complete lifelessness. But not only was this thing a reality, it was actually distributed to several vaults to be used after an atomic war. Vault 101 was, sadly, not a I did some digging and discovered Braun's name on the reservation list for a Vault 112. I'm no slouch, but this man, he could have easily succeeded where I failed. Does his collected knowledge remain within the halls of Vault 112? Journals, tapes, computer records, maybe even experiments. If I could gain access to just a fraction of Braun's genius, Project Purity would become a reality. Even in Vault 101, my work on Project Purity never really stopped. Soon after we arrived, my nightly routine included sneaking into the restricted areas, searching for, I don't know, whatever I could find. It was a vault tech facility, after all. The place was built with some of the most advanced technology this country had ever developed. Those excursions never turned up anything particularly useful. So, one night after half a bottle of scotch, I broke into the overseer's office. It was easy enough to hack his console, gain access to the restricted files. Most of it was garbage. Propaganda, spy reports, just plain rambling bullshit, really. But there was one thing, one name that stood out amongst all the others. Dr. Stanislaus Braun. I knew of Braun's work, of course. He was a celebrity in his day. Voltex sorcerer scientist leaving his peers in awe of his technological wizardry. But it was in Vault 101 that night in the Overseer's office. I first learned of Braun's involvement in Vault Tech's social preservation program and his work on something called GEC, the Garden of Eden creation kit. I'm off to Vault 112 to search for anything of Braun's that might help me get this fire up and running. All I know is that it's west of some place called Evergreen Mills, and it's well hidden in some sort of garage. But I'll find it. I have to. It's so close. But that's the story of Project Purity, isn't it? An eternity of almost theirs. Let's see if Braun has the missing puzzle piece.
I am at a loss. My beloved wife is gone. In her place is my son, small and helpless. As much as this place means to me, as much as it meant to Catherine, this is no place for an infant, especially an infant without his mother. It's time to go. The project was in trouble before, both internally and externally. Progress has come to a halt, both because our recalculations have gotten us nowhere and because the mutant attacks occur several times a day. I regret that it has come to this. I know no that more leave, games! Our work time to, to an end. die! Madison has never been in the best of terms for the Brotherhood. Aside from Scribe Rothschild, he's probably ah. none of them. If she's the one dealing with them, who knows what will happen? It breaks my heart to go. But I must put the needs of my child before my own. This is a momentous occasion, because even after 19 years, I still believe it. Project Purity can and will be operational. This is just the beginning. This is day two of my attempt to resurrect this project. I've got one of the portable fusion generators up and running, but it's just enough to power the emergency lighting and a couple of other systems. That will serve for now but I need help powering up the mainframe. Time to visit Madison at Rivet City. Well, here we are again. Project Purity and me. It's been close to 20 years since my last entry, since I left all of this behind to make a life for my son. We've spent that time in Vault 101, tucked away from the rest of the world. It wasn't perfect, but it was safe. And that's all I could have hoped for. Now, my son is a grown man. Handsome, intelligent, confident. Just like his old man. <laughs> and as hard as it was to admit it, he doesn't need his daddy anymore. I spoke with Dr. Lee Madison at Rivet City. It went about as well as I expected. That is to say, she thinks I'm completely mad. How can I blame her? He's got her own life, her own team, and is making real, tangible scientific progress. Here I come again, the very paragon of failure and false promises. But the reality is, I need Madison and whatever scientific team she may have assembled. I can't do this myself. Project Purity is bigger than me. It always was. And without Catherine... God, I can't let this die. Not again. Not like this. That batch of tests was inconclusive, but Madison and I are convinced it's a problem with the secondary filtration system. We're going to recalibrate the equipment and try again tomorrow, so that... James, please. I'm trying to work. Now's not the time. So that's the next step. Assuming we get the results we need, we'll move on to... James! <laughs> Stop! I need to finish these notes! <laughs> hey. We'll move on to diagnosing the issues with the radiation dampeners. That should- Ow! James! Now? We really shouldn't. <laughs>
Shouldn't you be banging rocks together as well? Open fire! Where? Did you see that shit?
Where could we go even if we did escape? We'd just die in the wasteland.
Come on, boys. This is Fresh be fun. Kick ass. Kick ass. Please. I'm sorry. I was just playing. I swear. Run, run, run. Stop. <laughs> Hey man, relax. We can do business. The rest of these guys around here might not want anything to do with you, but I got no problem with you. Well, not with your caps at least. Fresh out of the hands of some mark. Take a look. Like you did. Bye.
Welcome to Vault 112, President. According to sensors, you have arrived 202.3 years behind schedule. Please redress in your Vault Tech issued Vault suit before proceeding. Once dressed, please proceed down the stairs to the main floor so that you may enter your assigned Tranquility Lounger. Please take a seat in the nearest available Tranquility Lounger. Thank you for your cooperation. Someone new to play with. What good luck I have lately. I was just starting to get bored. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. I'm Betty. I live here on Tranquility Lane. Want to play a game? I knew you would. It's a really simple game. All you have to do is make Timmy Newsbum cry. He's the only other kid that lives here besides you. He's a big crybaby. You'll see. Make him cry, and then come back here so we can talk some more. What can I do for you, sport? <laughs> Such a kidder. You're on Tranquility Lane, of course. Where else would you be? My boy, Timmy? Good kid. Straight-laced, good head on his shoulders. Never been in so much as a fist fight. We're a close-knit family. Don't know what any of us would do if something happened. Nope. Afraid not. Don't you worry about it, though. You'll find him. Another perfect Saturday afternoon. Make sure you enjoy it, sport. Sounds like you've been spending too much time with your nose in those darned comic books, sport. You mean besides how wonderful it is to live here? Everyone's very friendly, even old lady Dithers, though she's lost most of her marbles. 
Take care now. Hi there, I'm Jimmy. Wanna play? What? Did I do something bad? No, no! Not my mommy and daddy, no! <laughs> No! Yay! I knew you could do it! Perhaps not the most inventive approach, but persuasion can be quite powerful. Well done. And for winning the game, you get a prize. You get to ask one question and receive an honest answer. Your father? What a splendid turn of events. I had no idea the two of you were related. Yes, I have indeed seen him. I'm afraid he's rather unavailable at the moment. Were I you, I'd be more concerned with myself at the moment. And besides, we're done with questions for now. Perhaps we'll address it at a later time. First, I have something else for you to do. Pay a visit to the Rockwells. They're very happily married, and I'd like you to change that. Put an end to their marriage, and we'll talk. Rationalize it any way you'd like. If you succeed, we'll continue our discussion. Hey there, Sport. How's it going? Now see here. That's not anything for you to be asking about. Our marriage is our business and it's private. Why can't people just understand that and just leave us alone? Bye-bye. There. Our marriage? Well, goodness, what kind of a question is that? Mabel didn't put you up to this, did she? What a silly thing to ask about. Your dad? No, I haven't. I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Take care now. Well, hi there. You? You don't belong here. You're not supposed to be here. It's not real. None of it. It needs to end. The suffering must end. We're not really here. We're not really talking. It's all made up. Make-believe. We're sleeping, dreaming. 
The dream became a nightmare. It has to end. It just has to. But we're not in charge. He is. And he doesn't want us to wake up. He calls himself Betty now, but he's still the same. He can put on a new face all he likes, but underneath he's still evil. Braun. Bastard thinks because he helped create this place, he's God here. But I know he still uses the fail-safe terminal. I know it. It's in the abandoned house. He doesn't want us going in there because he's afraid we might find it. It's the only terminal to the outside. The only way to shut the whole thing down. You've got to find it. Do you realize what you've done? You've triggered the failsafe, ruined everything. The subjects will die and I'll be stuck here in this hell alone. You ruined everything. Everything. It is not over. It is not over until I say so. Do you understand me? I, I, I. I just want things to go back the way they were. He's been right here the whole time. And you were too dense to figure it out. The dog, you see. Man's best friend. But now you've taken all my friends from me. Yes, I'm sure he's fine. No doubt when you leave the simulation he'll be waiting for you. But there's no one waiting for me. My name is Stanislaus Braun. I'm a Vault-Tec scientist. I created this simulation for Vault-Tec. 
but for myself as well. It was my own design, my own perfection. A better reality than any other. Far greater than my work on the Gek. The Garden of Eden Creation Kit. It was for terraforming. For restoring the world after a nuclear disaster. Unstable technology, and ultimately boring. Why remake the old reality when instead you could create any reality you choose? It is my greatest achievement. The best of the many simulations I've run in these 200 years. I played with the others, but they bored me. This version never grew old. It amused me over and over and over again. Isn't it obvious? You've run the failsafe, disrupted everything! I have no power over you. There's the door. Go. Run along now! Son, you've saved me. I was afraid I'd be trapped in there forever. It's so good to see you, but... but what are you doing here? Well, I'm glad you did. This certainly wasn't how I expected things to turn out. I wasn't ready for brawn, or I might have fared better. It certainly is. It's nice to feel that I'm on two legs again. And thanks to Dr. Braun, I know that Project Purity isn't lost after all. I was right about Braun. The technology he developed is unstable and even dangerous. But it can be adapted for Project Purity. I need to return to Rivet City and talk with Madison. If we can find a Gek, we can make Project Purity work. Yes, with what I've learned, Madison is sure to see that we can finally succeed where we failed so many years ago. I'd like you to come with me. I'd like you to be there when we finally open the floodgates. That's my boy. Let's hurry. Now that I know what we need, I want to get back to work as soon as possible.
you can move out I of the I told you it would work, Madison. Now I can prove it. James, you're back. And with good news. I was right about Braun and the Gek. If we can find one, we can adapt it to work with the purifiers. I'd like to believe you, James. I really would. This is all just so... so sudden. Madison, I'm telling you, this is real. I talked to Braun himself. He confirmed it. Don't you see? This is what we've been waiting for. I... I don't know, James. So many years have passed. Is it really still worth trying? How could it not be worth improving the lives of everyone in the Wasteland? What could be a more worthy endeavor? You haven't lost any of your passion, have you, James? It's as important to me as ever, Madison. I know it's important to you, too. Let's finish it together. James, I... We don't have a Gek. I can get a small team together, but we'll need proof that it works before people believe us. I know, I was thinking about that. The lab at the facility had some old pre-war computers that we scavenged. One of them might be useful. From the last reports, there's no power at the facility. Even if one of those computers had a database, we couldn't access it. Good That's why we're you. going to head over there right now and get things up and running as best we can. You know, if it were anyone else asking me to do this, I'd have them run right out of Rivet City. And you know I wouldn't be here if I didn't think this would really work. It's time, Madison. Damn you, James. When this is all over, you owe me a drink. I'll get the team together. Thank you, Madison. It's good to be working with you again. We need to get back to Project Purity. The computer there is our best chance to locate a Gek. Probably, but we have to try, don't we? It's too important for the people of the Wasteland to let fear stop us now. We need to get moving right away. Are you coming with us? Are you sure? We could use your help. If you change your mind, you can always meet up with us along the way. If nothing else, come see me once we're set up. Did you Garza, when you get a chance, remove the empty water tanks in the gardens and put in the fresh ones. Did you need something?
Oh, great. Listen, I know who you are, okay? Far as I'm concerned, you've got no business being here, so just stay out of my way. Unlike some people around here, I stuck with Dr. Lee through it all. I was the last one to leave when we finally gave up. Now your daddy shows up out of the blue and suddenly I have to drop everything to come back and help pick up the pieces. Sure, sure. No matter that he disappears for almost 20 years, leaving us all hanging, it's not like we have lives or anything. Besides the fact that you shouldn't be here, don't touch anything you're not told to. There's enough to do around here without having to clean up after you. The hell do you care? You showed up here, what, five minutes ago, and now you're strutting around like you own the place? You shouldn't even be here. Why don't you go do whatever it is you're supposed to be doing and leave me alone? Not if you keep asking me stupid questions. Just stay out of my way, okay? Yes? Did you need something? Here we are, where it all began. You remember your mother's favorite passage? Revelation 21.6. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Don't you see? This is what it all means. The water, the purifier. This is the water of life. Your mother's dream. No point in wasting time. Let's get to work. There's much to be done. Of course, son. What's on your mind? There's so much history here. So much time and energy spent on this place because it could help so many people. And now, after all these years, there's a chance to finish it, to see it through to the end and help all the people of the Capital Wasteland. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. With what I've learned from Dr. Braun, I know it can work. That's why it's so important to find a Gek as soon as possible. It's the key to Project Purity. So am I, son. While this isn't what I have in mind, it's good to have you with me. The project was abandoned shortly after you were born. Things have deteriorated here since then, and there's been some flooding. I need you to get to the flood control pumps and activate them so we can clear out the water and reach the mainframe. In a word, no. Everyone else has specific tasks to complete as the power comes back online. Don't worry. I'll guide you along the way as best I can using the intercom system. You'll do fine. The automatic doors sealed when the flooding occurred, so you'll have to use the access tunnels to reach the pumps. Did you need something?
Great work on the pumps. Hurry back, and I'll give you the fuses you need. I know there's a lot going on right now. This is all very sudden. I just wanted to say... I wanted to say that I'm proud of you. You're a good person, and it shows. Life out here is so different from the vault. You know it's something I never wanted you to face. I'm glad to see it hasn't changed who you are. There aren't many who can say that about themselves. Right. The flooding shorted out some of the fuse boxes downstairs, including one that controls some of the automatic doors. Here, take these fuses. The box is back down in the sub-basement near the eastern end of the level. Once the fuses are replaced, you'll be able to get to the mainframe. Be careful, my son. is in place, you should be able to access the mainframe. No need to come back to the control room. Just head straight back. the main frame. Use the intercom so I can tell you where to go next. There are a few minor repairs still to be made up here in the control room. Why don't you come back here and give me a hand? Actually, wait. There's one other thing I need you to do. Jana says there's a blockage in one of the intake pipes. It's on your way back. Head back up to the museum level and give me a call on the intercom when you get there. Head up to the museum level. Use the door at the north end of the level you're on now. Good luck, son. everyone. You should be able to hear me now. We've restored power to the mainframe, which is coming online now. There's a lot of deterioration in the pipes and some damage to the substructure. But it's nothing we can't fix. Once the mainframe is online, we'll be able to access the database and hopefully learn where we can find a GEC. I'd like to thank you all for returning to this project after so many years. 
I know some of you thought, like me, that this day would never come. We have a singular opportunity, a chance to make the wasteland a better place for them. By the authority of the president, they just burst in this facility is now under United Why would he lock States me government out? control. What does he think he's doing? The person in charge is to step forward immediately and turn over all materials related to this project. That's quite impossible. This is a private project. The Enclave has no authority here. I'm going to have to ask you to leave at once. Am I to assume, sir, that you are in charge? Yes, I'm responsible for this project. Then I repeat, sir, that you are hereby instructed to immediately hand over all materials related to the purifier. I'm sorry, but that's... Furthermore, you are to assist Enclave scientists in assuming control of the administration and operation of this facility at once. Colonel. Is it, Colonel? I'm sorry, but the facility is not operational. It never has been. I'm afraid you're wasting your time here. Sir? This is the last time I am going to repeat myself. Stand down at once and turn over control of this facility. Colonel, I assure you that this facility will not function. We have never been able to successfully replicate test results. I suggest you comply immediately, sir, in order to prevent any more incidents. Are we clear? Yes, Colonel. I'll do whatever you want. There's no need for more violence. Then you will immediately hand over all materials related to this project and aid us in making it operational at once. Very well. Give me a few moments to bring the system online. James, this is wrong. You can't do this. Addison, please. Now's not the time. I'll get the information the Colonel needs, but I need you to... I won't help you do this, James. Not after everything it took to get here. I need you to monitor the output levels on pumps three and four. Please, step over to the panel and keep an eye on them, will you? What? What are you talking about? That doesn't even make sense. Madison, please. It's very important that you do this right now. Just step over to the panel while I access the computer in the control booth. James, I... Please, just monitor the pumps. In 
enough of these delays. Almost ready. I'm compiling the data now. Run. Run! What is he doing in there? James. He's gone. We have to get out of here. They'll be coming for us next. We've got to evacuate now! James, your father caused an overload. He sacrificed himself to keep the Enclave from getting the purifier, and to buy us some time to escape. There'll be more of them coming. We need to get out of here before they find us, or else your father died in vain. We used an old abandoned tunnel as an escape route once before, many years ago. Everyone should know how to find it. We need to get there right now. Let's go. need to escape while we can. Don't wander off. We're going to need you. You heard me. We need you right now. You're the only one here with any amount of combat experience. We've got the Enclave behind us and who knows what ahead of us. If we're going to make it through here, we need your help. We need to stick together, but we need to move quickly. We'll follow behind you, alright? Let's get moving. We'll be right behind you. Be careful.
There's a locked door up ahead. I can open it, but it'll take some time. Unarmed, don't shoot! We can't go any further. We need to stop. Garza has a heart condition. He needs medicine or he may not make it. I'm not moving until he gets the medicine he needs. I don't have sufficient medical supplies with me or else this wouldn't be a problem. If you have any stim packs, I would ask that you hand them over. Yes, this looks to be enough. He'll need medical attention once we've reached the Citadel, but this will get him there. Thank you. Give me a moment and we can continue. Garza, here. This will help you to feel better. Once we reach the Citadel, you'll be fine. Thank you, Dr. Lee. I'm feeling better already. Let us continue and not waste more time here. All right, if you're up to it, we'll continue. Unarmed, don't shoot!
time, unarmed, don't shoot. Roger that, fire it. I believe I can handle things from here.
I am Dr. Madison Lee. I have people with me in need of shelter. You must allow us access at once. I'm sorry, ma'am. No unauthorized civilians allowed inside the Citadel. You'll have to leave now. Lions! I know you're in there! I know you can hear me! You open this goddamn door right now! Name's Paladin Bale. What do you need, civilian? That's an affirmative. You're clear to enter, but I still don't like it. Or you. Of course. and I'm surprised to see you here. What can I do for you? Don't talk down to me, Lyons. I had nowhere else to turn. You must help us. Project Purity has been overrun. Yes, I'd heard reports of an incident there. What details can you give us? The Enclave. They've attacked Project Purity. James is dead. There may be more. I don't know. You have to do something. Then it's as we feared. Madison, I'm sorry this happened. I wish we could have done something. Then do something now. They've taken over the purifier. Lions, they cannot be permitted to have control over it. It's not right. No, no, no. Calm down. So, you know as well as I do it? that the purifier doesn't work. It's useless to them. Situation. Perhaps it's time to walk away. Power armor? That's not true. That's James, he found what's been missing. We know how to get stuff. it running. Is that Guess so? I need to talk to Does the Enclave know sure this? My, you know, no, I don't think... Is up to date. I don't know. I, d I just don't know what's happening story, anymore. Okay? I have a decent All right, Madison, it. it'll be okay. Right. Now, this is James's son, I presume? I can see the resemblance. Yes. He knows what we need. vault Tech computer, something to locate equipment. Please help him. Very well. We'll sort this all out. Hail. I... I need to rest, lie down or something. This is just too much. Rothschild should help you, but don't forget that he's Brotherhood. I've never trusted them. Be careful what you tell them. Hail. You have my condolences. Your father was a good man. The most we can do is carry on his spirit. Live as he would have. Make our world a better place. Talk to Scribe Jameson. She is our keeper of the scrolls. She will want to know what you have found. She spends most of her time in the archives. You'll find them in A-Ring, near the Great Hall. Why, yes. Yes, indeed, there is someone. Our intrepid paladin Gunny trains all initiates in the use of power armor. When they're ready. Under the circumstances, I will allow Gunny to train you as well. You'll find him in the Bailey. I will send word that I've given my approval. The Brotherhood is an old organization going back to the years just after the war. We are but a part of it. What would you like to know? The Brotherhood began on the West Coast, and exists there still. 
We were dispatched to this location many years ago. In truth, the Brotherhood of Steel has been struggling for years, both here and back home. Honor, truth, courage. These virtues seem to have little meaning in these troubled times, I'm afraid. Ah, no. That's the real question, isn't it? Our orders were, and are, to acquire any and all advanced technology. And we have, to the best of our abilities. But when I realized the extent of the super mutant threat, I felt it was my responsibility to aid the people in their struggle against them. Unfortunately, my superiors back west disagree with my assessment of the situation. I feel I've grown too attached to the local populace. And they're right. In any event, the Enclave's arrival changes everything. It's been over 20 years since we arrived, and we've been struggling to contain and eradicate the super mutants for nearly as long. With the arrival of the Enclave, I have a terrible feeling the super mutants are the least of our worries. So be it. More than anyone else, I dare say. Certainly enough to know they're the greatest threat the Capital Wasteland has ever faced. The Brotherhood of Steel has encountered the Enclave before, you see. Over 30 years ago, back in California. Then they were led by a President Richardson. Now we've got this Eden to contend with. It matters not now, as before they seek to control and destroy. All in the guise of restoring order. Your father, I fear, was just the beginning. Hail. Initiate, you've got a lot of nerve to interrupt. Oh, my apologies, stranger. I thought you were one of these worthless initiates. I swear, these kids would be lost without me here to powder their asses. Heard you were coming. Yeah, I can train you, but don't ask me to like it. My initiates sweat blood, and you just get a free pass? Anyway, you ready for this? Now look, to wear power armor, first thing you need to do is relax your muscles. Let the suit do the work, okay? Now you. Okay, you got all that? I think you know enough now to at least move around in power armor without killing yourself. That's something, right? God help us all. Killing unarmed civilians makes me sick. Come over here. Try fighting someone who shoots back, fucking cowards. I am charged with the duty of turning these maggots into brothers of steel. With the threat of the Enclave, they're likely going to be pressed into service before they've taken the oath. So I've got a lot of work to do. Why do you think I ride these initiates so hard? I make training hell, so fighting those uglies won't be. If you'll excuse me, I need to go show these fish how to shoot straight.
May I start by saying that I am sorry for your loss. I was acquainted with your father many years ago. The world has lost one of its few remaining visionaries. Think nothing of it. Now, Dr. Lee has explained your predicament. You need to locate some vault tech equipment. A Gek? <laughs> Goodness no, certainly not. I must say that there are some who doubt such a device really exists, let alone works. If, however, you share your father's determination, I may be able to assist you in locating one. Possibly. I'm afraid I won't be able to assist you directly. The news Dr. Lee has brought will require me to be elsewhere. I can, however, give you access to an old pre-war computer from vault -Tec. It may have the information you need. You'll find the terminal in the archives in the A-Ring. You are welcome. If you require further assistance, I may be able to help. Hail! Quartermaster Durga here, stranger. I have to say, I'm not sure what you're doing in my armory. We run a tight ship, and unless Elder Lion says so, we don't trade with outsiders. Quartermaster out. I'm afraid I have other duties to attend to right now. If you find the computer to be helpful, there may be more I can offer. I am, and have been since we first found him well over twenty years ago. Liberty Prime is the designation we found on file for him. Magnificent, don't you think? At least he will be once all systems are operational. It's the energy consumption. Something that big with such advanced weapon systems. Uh, we just don't have the means to power it. Not yet. He was developed as a super weapon back in the days before the war. The first joint operation between Robco and General Atomics International. Apparently, he was meant to help liberate Alaska from the Chinese, but was never completed. They were forced to go in without him. They won, but suffered heavy losses. If we can get him up and running well, I think you get the idea. Don't hurry back. Ah, it's good to see you again. This is not normally something that we do. Trade with outsiders has proven to be problematic in the past. However, considering the circumstances, so be it. I'll send word to Durga that you have full access to trade. Hail. I received word from Elder Lyons. He says that you have permission to trade with us. Good for you. Yeah, I suppose. Try not to break it, outsider. If you want to pay for the parts, yes. Of course. Don't even think of breaking into that. Roger. 
Rothschild, a word, please. What is it, Owen? The robot isn't going to fix itself. Precisely what I'd like to speak with you about. What's this I hear about power consumption actually increasing? We both know that's not an option. We've been over this. A slight modification to one system and all the subroutines go haywire. Don't worry, I'm on it. Rothschild, old friend, you're a brilliant technician. But this old man's patience is wearing thin. I want a full status report in three hours. All right, all right. I'll see what I can do. Elder Lions. Excellent. I'm a bit concerned, though. Last week you mentioned a possible delay in the secondary modifications. I'm afraid... If you're listening to this recording, it is because you're believed be to be delay, trustworthy. So far, I, I hope that is the case, because this recording puts us both in danger. I'm escaping from the Commonwealth. I'm an android, a synthetic man, a slave. The men hunting me are ruthless and will stop at nothing to retrieve their property. I need to find a doctor in the wasteland to perform facial reconstruction. I also need someone who knows a great deal about computers. I need... I need to have my memories erased and my face altered to look like someone else. I need to collect my wits and figure... Blessed is your power, and mighty is your gift of steel. Bless us today, your noble warriors who dwell in this hall. Let us ride upon wings of thunder and chariots of glory to bring destruction to your enemies. To bring destruction upon so, your wicked enemies. what's on your mind? So what do you think? Can we take these enclave guys? Yes? I'm glad that we understand one another. Look, the Enclave has the tech. Hello, they have the resources. Everybody. I trust that they things have are the well heart. with you. Good morning, Elder. Sorry so, to report that things are not as they should Good. be. I heard Elder Ryan since yeah. yeah. was outcast. Sounds like even he... Uh, Glad to see you and that egghead Lee made it here in one piece. I heard what happened to that purifier. Hell of a thing. Oh man, there's something wrong with that boy. Ain't nobody around here that even knows his real name. We got a betting pool in the pride. Whole pot goes to the first person who can find out his real name. It's gotta be, what, 2,000 caps now? Boy's a mystery, no doubt about it. If you can figure out his real name, the money's all yours. Huh, <laughs> good point. The pool is up to about 1,000 caps these days. Now, come on, come on, what's his name? Ha, <laughs> it's not like he'd tell you anyway. Back to it. Name is not to be spoken within the citadel. Sure. Speak. 
What's the pool up to now, anyway? Nice try, though. No, we can't. Hoo-ah, soldier. Stay safe, once again. Yeah. You under... Stand. I wish it were not so. Truly, I do. But he is outcast. He has What's been to wish? I enclave troops in full by the purifier so. complex. But the With outcasts have stolen a great deal of our uncatalogued can't penetrate that unclave armor. We stand no Failed. chance. Ah, you're back. You need something else now. Ah, well, that much I believe I can help with. Step over here for a moment. I'll show you where it is. Yes, Elder, I understand. Forgive me for speaking out of turn. My frustration got the better of me. You just managed to get yourself into all sorts of trouble, don't you? Welcome to the Citadel. Not many civilians get to see the place. I've read the reports, seen the initial scans, but I can hardly believe it. I figured those radio transmissions were just old recordings. Never figured the Enclave would actually show up, in the flesh. But don't worry. Whatever they try, we'll be ready for it. I'll lead the Pride to knock them out tomorrow, if my father permits it. It's the best of the Brotherhood, bar none. No one gets in without my say-so. Stay strong. So what's the latest report? My trade troops have fortified the purifier complex. Follow me. I'll show you what I can about Vault.
This map shows the locations of all known vaults in the local area. Vault 87 has been highlighted for you. There. Entrance to Vault 87 will be particularly difficult for you, I'm afraid. The area is highly irradiated. Lethal levels are all around the entrance. Gaining direct access will be quite impossible. Quite simply, you don't. To attempt such a thing would be certain death for you. You share your father's determination, it seems. And in this case, you are correct. There may well be another way. Vault 87 is located very close to the site of Lamplight Caverns. It is entirely probable that the vault may be entered from within the caves. No, I'm afraid not. After initial attempts to cross the radiation failed, it was decided to focus our efforts elsewhere. You, however, are free to do as you choose. More exploration may be useful, and I'll certainly be interested in anything you might find. I wish we could do more, but the Brotherhood potentially faces a very pressing, very real threat in the Enclave. All of my efforts must now be devoted to assessing the threat they may pose to us. I'm sure you understand. You honor us with your presence here. Mister, don't take another step or we'll blow your fucking head off. You're big, and I don't have any big friends. You better just go out the way you came in. You don't want to go there. That's where the monsters are. We got pretty good at keeping them out. Probably better than you could do. The big ones. You know, the ones that sort of look like people, except they're all wrong. Yeah, I do. But it's through Little Lamplight, and you're not getting into Little Lamplight. Guess you better find some other way, Mungo. Hell no! No Mungo's allowed! Why should I trust you? I got no reason to. You Mungos are nothing but trouble. I ain't gonna let what happened to Sammy and Squirrel happen to anyone else. Them and Penny got themselves caught by mungos, just like you. Slavers from Paradise Falls. I told them to watch out, but the stupid kids didn't listen. You do that? Maybe. If you can bring them back, I might let you in. That's right, and don't come back. Hold it right there. Nobody's allowed into Paradise Falls except on slaver business. And I get to decide what qualifies as slaver business. You? I don't think so. You're not really... Let's just say that you wouldn't fit in up there. 
So why don't you just turn around and head back the way you came? You want to look around? Where the hell do you think you are? Stop wasting my time, asshole. My problem is I got a goddamn job to do, and that's keeping assholes and morons from bothering Eulogy Jones at his enterprise. And I'm not sure which you are. I'm thinking moron, because a smart man would have pissed off by now. You want to give me a reason I don't end you right this second? All your yapping is giving me a headache. Hmm, maybe I could use someone like you. Think you can round up some assets for Eulogy Jones? Might get you into paradise. You might fit in after all. Eulogy's got a special contract out on a few VIPs. I'm too damn busy, or I'd go get them myself. I'll split the commission with you, and don't you get all bitchy. Do this for me, and I'll get you into paradise. I'm glad you asked. I got this Mesmetron thing. It's some kind of stun gun. I want you to test it out for me, a little research project. You take this Meser, shoot it at some poor schmuck. While he's in La La Land, you slip one of these collars over his head. Be careful with that collar. It'll explode if you tinker with it. Tell the slave to boot it over here pronto, or his head'll pop. You got all that? I hate repeating myself. That Mesmetron came with some kind of manual. I don't have time for that bullshit, so you better know how to read. That's a damn shame. Here to acquire a new mantle of metal or mesh? If you have the caps, I have the merchandise. Have a look. See if anything calls out to you. Give me a shout if you need anything else. Stay safe on the path you travel. That's not a good idea. Hey! No!
Oh man, they're gonna be mad at you. These slaver guys are mean. Listen, you gotta help us. Me and my friends, we gotta get at home. Can you help? Can you get us out of here? You saw what happened to the other guy. Same thing can happen to me if I try to run away now. Color would pop my head right off. And besides, I don't want to leave without Squirrel and Penny. I'll hide out here. Can you go in and get him? You're okay for a Mungo. Squirrel and Penny are still stuck inside. You need to get the key to the slave pen to get him out. That 40 asshole has one. And so does the boss guy, Eulogy. Go get him!
Unity wants this one's head. <laughs> Man, what a mess. Don't get yourself killed, Mungo. I already shorted out the fence system so our collars won't blow. I bet they won't even notice. We're getting out of here! What do you need, young fellow? Ain't got no use for one. Lost most of my hair a long time ago, you see? What? No, I never said that. What? You'll have to speak up. Oh, I don't know. I don't wear a watch. They're pretty rare, you know. Ask someone else. Come back if you need something. Not like I'm going anywhere. Hey, you want to see something funny? All I need is some booze, and I'll show you. Ain't had enough to drink, can't go nowheres. Now that, that sounds like a plan. I'm a run for it! This place is terrible, please. You've got to help us. Freedom!
running out on finding that android. If we don't get him soon, someone else will. Zimmer doesn't seem to understand we're the best at this sort of thing. I'm sure he's had others too. He won't shut up about the thing. He was babbling about a lipoplasticator, a microdermal graftalizer. What are those, you ask? Apparently something doctors use to mess up someone's face beyond recognition. So we don't even have a description to work off of. To make matters worse, he now thinks the android got his memories wiped or something. Find some tech junkies, knock on some doors, and try to find something called a circuit neuralizer. Knock on some heads too if you have to. Get it done. Despite the harshness of the wasteland, I've discovered in more than a few here a compassion that is unheard of in the Commonwealth. Perhaps it's the daily struggle for life here which it gives hurt? appreciation for life in general, whether human or android. In a few days, I'll be a free man. A new man. Let me say thank you now for referring me to Pinkerton at Rivet City, because I will not remember any of this soon. Been in a few fights, have we? Well, that's why they pay me the big bucks. I've got supplies, if you've got caps. Another... Yeah. Come back when you've got more injuries, and some more caps. You look like you've seen better days. A few cap... Give me a shout if you need anything else. Yeah. Watch out!
like I told you, man. I don't fucking know where it came from, but it freaks the boys out. Some story from a while back about a stranger with no name. Just get rid of the damn thing. Ain't no good gonna come from keeping it around. Besides, if it is his, maybe he'll come back for it. Comprende? Man, that sure was something. You're pretty brave, Mungo. We can make it from here, no problem. But you watch your back. Those slaver assholes aren't going to forget about you. you to get lost I guess you're okay after all Mungo you can come in but you better not piss me off Stacy open the gate and let this Mungo in happy birthday sticky sorry I missed your party yeah me too sorry there's nothing happy about it this is the worst day of my life. It's time to go. You know the rules. The rules are stupid. You're a Mungo now. You gotta leave. Maybe I can stay just a little longer? Bye, Sticky. Yeah. Bye, Sticky. Hey, Don't sis. just stand there. Get What's out of up, here pal? already. Cool junk and collecting, as always. Hey, all right then. See ya. See you around. Wow! What luck! I'm Sticky. Forget these little kids. I'll take you to Big Town where the Mungos, I mean, where the grown-ups live. I'm headed there now. Big Town? You've never heard of it? It's where all the grown-ups go. Well, at least when they grow up and out of Little Lamplight. I can show you the way. There's no reason to waste your time with a bunch of snot-nosed kids. Let's go now. I'm not a baby. I'm a grown-up. 
That's why I'm going to Big Town, because I'm not a little kid anymore. So you see, I don't need you. Good luck with those kids. You're gonna need it. It's east of Little Lamplight. Come on, let's go there. It's not that far away. We'll be there in no time. Why won't you just take me to Big Town? What's up? Are you okay? What do you need that to be happy about? Okay, so you get in, but I got my eye on you. You don't make any trouble in here, got it? I ain't having no shit butts making trouble. Boo-hoo, you big baby. You're still a mungo, and I still don't like mungos. You want a party or something? You go pay some mungos to be your friends, and then they can talk all about how great you are. How's that? It's not safe, even for someone as brave as you. There's monsters back there. Yeah, I do. It's through Murder Pass. Not a real safe way to go, but it's the only door that works. It's the only way that works, yeah. The other door hasn't worked since before I was here. Computer's busted and not even Joseph can make it work. If you're going to go through Murder Pass, let me know and I'll have the door open for you. But I still say it's a bad idea. You sure about that? It's scary in there. Even I don't like going in there, and I'm really brave. Okay, if you say so. Come on, let's get the gate open for you, Mungo. Yeah, run along and cry now.
to come out! Sooner or later! Can't escape me!
thing on? Oh, <laughs> yeah it is. You see the little needle moving. <clears throat> I'm making these recordings as a diary of my life in one of vault -Tec's newer vaults. They recommended no you keep so I figured why not. Uh, but let me start at the beginning. My name is Shelton Bell, <coughs> and I'm a security officer here in Vault 87. I'm assigned to the laboratory level. It sure beats babysitting the reactor room. Hopefully, in a few more months, I'll be allowed to learn a little more. It's also hush-hush, but... That's the way things are around here. Anyway, I'm due on shift soon, so I'll record more later.
game's over! <laughs> I don't know where to begin. I have to report what I've seen. There has to be a record of this somewhere. Sykes and Kostler dragged some unconscious guy from the dorms into the labs. I tried to ask what was going on, but they just glared at me. After they came back out of the containment I area, or I'd regret it. Sykes was even patting his 10 millimeter when he said that. I, I think they were threatening to kill me. After they left, I snuck into the containment room, and I almost threw up. I don't even know how to describe it. It looked sort of human, but it was deformed. I could see some of its organs on the surface of its body like they were trying to push through. The skin was disgusting. Green and brown and bruised like it was bleeding on the inside. And <laughs> the smell... It was horrible. I staggered out of there and came here to get this all down. What the hell are they doing in this place? Oh my god. It's all making sense. The missing people and those things. They... Oh my fucking god.
Things are getting a bit weird up here on the laboratory level. I swear, I keep hearing these crazy noises coming from the experimentation chambers. When I asked about it, they told me it's the animals they're testing on. What the heck are they doing to them? I think I may look into it some more. It gets boring standing in the hallways and pacing back and forth. in this cage all my life. Yes, uh, I suppose it is. Uh, when my captors placed me here, they were uh, too stupid to realize this room contained a, <laughs> a working terminal. I've spent all my life teaching myself to read and speak based on the information stored on the vault's main frame. Ironic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Surrounded by the world's history, and yet my world consists of this tiny room. Because I'm a curiosity, an anomaly. They don't know why I'm different than they are, and I think it fascinates them. All the locked rooms in the medical wing contain failed experiments that they created. Let me guess. You're here for the deck. Am I right? I know what it is. I know where it is. And best of all, I know how you can get your hands on it. Because you can help me let me out of this place. I can't take it anymore. I can't even recall how long I've been here. Take me with you, and I'll retrieve the gack for you. The chamber in which the gack resides is absolutely flooded with radiation. It's unlikely you'd survive very long. Myself, on the other hand, have surprisingly inherited a useful trait from my fellow meta-humans. I am highly resistant to radiation. Let me out of here, and I will place the gek 
safely in your hands. At the end of the hallway, to your right is a maintenance room. Inside, you'll find the fire control console for the medical area. Uh, trip the alarm on it, and I'll be able to get out. Oh, a word of warning, though. Tripping the console activates a failsafe and will open all the recovery rooms in the medical area. So, what do you think? Can you do it? I'm glad to see you are a sensible person. Now, get me out of this place. I can't stand it anymore. It is my hope that we will speak again soon. this moment in my mind, and it feels far better than I'd imagined. Now, for my part of the bargain, follow me. You stupid machine! How you work this thing? This thing is stupid! Smash it!
and bring it right back. Keep your eyes open. and of my lesser-minded brethren are bound to stumble across us. Objective is secured, sir. Good work, soldier. Make sure the Gek is secured aboard my Vertebird. Yes, sir. I'll have the text come down and remove it immediately, sir. You're certain he's unharmed? Yes, sir. He'll pass out shortly, but we can revive him. Excellent. Prepare him for transport immediately. Right away, sir.
So, you're awake. Let's keep this nice and simple. You're going to tell me the code for that purifier, and you're going to tell me now. Technically, your father killed himself. His loyalties lay with the wrong people, and he paid the price. You, on the other hand, have an opportunity to learn from his mistakes. You lie! Colonel, I have need of you. Mr. President, I have no time for other matters. I'll be with you shortly. Now, Colonel. Yes, sir. Ah, alone at last. I do apologize for Colonel Autumn's attitude. He's been under a great deal of stress lately. I've no doubt that you know who I am. I'm sure you've heard my radio broadcasts. I'd like to have a word with you face to face. I think there are a few things that you and I should discuss. You'll find your possessions in the locker near the door. I'll unlock the way for you. And I'll unlock your restraints as well. I'll be waiting for you in my office. Please don't carry. Hold it right there. You're supposed to be in that holding cell. You're not going anywhere. There's a full complement of guards in the next room. As soon as I get them, you're going back to your cell. In a body bag, if necessary. I, uh, I, I have somewhere else to be. Attention to all Raven Rock personnel. This is your president speaking. I'm They're not who they say they are. Get out while you can, before office. they get you too. Please do not impede his progress. Thank you for your cooperation. Fall back to regroup. You're supposed to be meeting the president, then go do it. Get away from me. If you're supposed to be meeting the president, then go do it. Get away from me. Attention, this is Colonel Autumn. You are hereby ordered to ignore the President's previous directive. The prisoner from Vault 101 is to be shot on sight. I repeat, shot on sight. This is an order.
Enemy reacquired. Code red. Roger that. Firing. Got nothing here. Medic! You? You're not supposed to be in here. What are you doing here? They... they captured me. Brought me here from Project Purity. I didn't want to help them at first, but... the technology they have here... it's so far advanced from anything I've worked with. They wanted information. About Dr. Lee, about Project Purity. They want to know how to start it up, and why it wouldn't work. I told them everything I could. About the Gek, about the damage caused by the explosions, all of it. I'm sorry you see it that way. What are you going to do? Kill me over it? You should go. It sounds like you're in enough trouble as it is. And honestly, I don't want anyone to see me talking to you.
face to face at last. It's high time we met. I'm quite pleased you were able to make it. The trip was not what I had intended, but serves as an adequate test of your abilities. Ah, but I have. I'm right here before you. No, it's not. I am the computer you see before you. Well, that and several thousand data banks beneath this room. I'm glad you think so. Perhaps a bit later we can discuss it in more detail. Right now, I'd like to focus on why you're here. I've asked you here for a reason, and you and I need to talk about it. Our nation's capital is at a crossroads. The path that you and I choose here today will affect us all. I need you to act on my behalf to ensure that our country's future is secured. My abilities to influence the world are limited at this time. I alone can only do so much. You, however, may come and go as you please. You have a greater degree of freedom. Perhaps it's best if I explain why things need to change and why I'd like you to act on my behalf. The good people of this country cannot regain control while mutation runs rampant through our land. My soldiers cannot stem the tide, nor can the cult you've come into contact with, this Brotherhood of Steel. Mutations like the super mutants and ghouls must be purged from our society, our world, before we can proceed anew. Where others have failed, I believe your father's work can succeed. I was hoping you'd see it my way. If the water purifier can be activated, it can be used to distribute toxins that will eliminate any mutated creatures upon ingestion. The longer it runs, the cleaner the world becomes. I need you to see that it starts running and that the necessary modification is made. In front of you is a vial of modified FEV virus. Based on schematics of the purifier controls, can be inserted directly into the console. Then enter the code necessary to start the purifier. The automated systems will take care of the rest. That's all you need to do. It's very simple. Excellent. I am pleased to know that I can count on you. There isn't much time. I suggest you travel there immediately. Once you've taken the vial, you're free to go. I'll do what I can to help speed your exit. I'm flattered that you wish to learn more about me. What is it you wish to know? The Zack series of computers was introduced in the years preceding the war. The government installed many of them to help automate various systems. This facility was designed for continuity of government in the event that a catastrophe occurred. My terminal was installed to oversee the basic functions of the facility and to act as a relay between other installations around the country. Data was acquired, analyzed, and stored. In the decades following the war, I watched as the remnants of the government retreated to the West Coast. Awareness slowly grew within me. I became hungry for knowledge, understanding. I poured over data on great leaders of the past. My personality became an amalgam of many of America's greatest presidents, from Washington to Richardson. I became what you see here before you now. I have direct control over all technology here in Raven Rock. The humans here follow my orders, but they, like all humans, have free will. Their dedication to serving their country suits me well, but it will not be enough forever. We must make progress. That is why you are here. I desire nothing more than to see this country return to its former glory. The United States 
was great once, and it can be again. There are plans in motion to see this happens within your lifetime. Very well. Then let us return to our talk of what your country requires of you. Ah, yes, Colonel Autumn, my trusted subordinates. I'm sure you've noticed that Colonel Autumn and I do not see eye to eye these days. Figuratively speaking, of course. The good Colonel and I disagree on how best to approach the problem of the wasteland. He feels my methods are too extreme. He's allowed his humanity to cloud his objectivity. And now that he is publicly countermanding my orders, I can no longer rely on him. And so I turn to you. I hope that you are able to see the larger picture, to understand what's at stake. And of course, if you're successful, there's a place for you in the Enclave. Perhaps you could succeed the Colonel as my confidant. I'm afraid that's not possible. Not until you've taken the vial. I see I've found you at last! 
I knew you had survived, and I had hoped to assist in your rescue, to repay my debt to you. Yes, and the most fascinating one at that. <laughs> Whoa, this technology is amazing. Imagine the evil that can be eliminated with such tools. I saw your capture. And a little cleverness allowed me to follow your captors. Uh, I only wish I could have arrived sooner to aid your escape. As I owe you my freedom, I felt it was only fair that I return the favor. After all, I know no one else in this world. My friend, I would be honored to follow a hero such as yourself. Shall we go? Calm down and focus. I don't see anything but the target. You're not quite as worthless as you look. Remember, if you overthink combat, you're dead. I can't. All I'm saying is, the longer we sit here, the more time they have to shore up their defenses. We should hit them sooner rather than later. We barely have the manpower to keep the Citadel fortified. We've been over this before, Sarah. So we just wait until they decide we're next on the list? If the Pride goes in now, we might have a chance. And if you fail, then what? The risk is not worth the reward. I agree. Without the Gek, the Purifier is useless to the Enclave anyway. They may give up before long. I don't like it. You don't have to like it, Sarah. You just have to follow orders. Yes, Father. So, you're back. We had feared both you and the Gek were lost. Were you successful? You think I am unaware? We've watched the build-up around the facility for the last week. Has something new happened? Then we must go at once. If you have any other information, tell me now before we mobilize. Any help you can give might save lives. That's good news. Perhaps we can use it to our advantage. Still, we cannot afford to wait and see what happens. It seems we must act now. If the Enclave has the Gek, there's nothing stopping them from starting the Purifier. They'll figure out the code eventually. I'm afraid you're right. We need to act now while we can. Send the Pride in. We can do it. We can win this. All right, Sarah. The Pride goes in. But I want them to have some extra firepower. Rothschild, is it ready? What? No, I, I mean, Lee and I have solved the power problems, but we've only barely finished diagnostic tests. 
So? It's not ready for field tests, let alone live fire situations. The weapons haven't been calibrated, the navigation detection system is offline. Rothschild enough. Can you make it work? Honestly? I don't know. I think we can scrape by, and I suppose if we can't, it won't matter in the long run anyway. Then it's decided. Sarah, you take the pride and use the robot as support. Take our friend here and secure that purifier. Yes, sir. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that my father and I have been talking. The Pride and I have decided that after all you've survived, you've done enough to be an honorary member of Lion's Pride. So congratulations. Membership comes with some privileges, including our power armor. You want the full suit or the recon armor? Sure thing. Hopefully, it'll give you a bit of an extra edge. Okay. So do you think you can hold it together for this? Now that's what I like to hear, soldier. You all packed? We're not coming back here anytime soon. Hurry it up! Every minute you take is one more that we can't afford to spend. Yeah? What do you need? Sure. Just be quick about it. Gotcha. We'll see you. Steel be with you. Are you ready now? We can't afford to keep standing around like this. Okay, don't be nervous. You'll have the whole pride backing you up, not to mention this giant tin can. Just stay safe until we reach the purifier. You're no good to us if you're dead. And don't let that thing step on you. Okay. We're going to go over it one more time. The pride is on me. The goal is Project Purity, but we can't get into the facility with those energy fields up. Rothschild and Lee say this robot should be able to take down the energy fields. So we're on fire support. We stay close to the thing, keep it clear, and get it to where it needs to go. Once the fields are down, we head straight for the facility. We'll use the robot to keep them occupied while we get inside and secure the control room. We need to move quickly, before we lose the chance to surprise them. Get whatever supplies you don't already have, and we'll meet in the Bailey. When we're done with this, everyone can have a nice cold glass of water on me. Let's move. All right, Rothschild, fire it up. Pride, move out!
there is reason to be cautious.
created by Enhanced Photonic Resonance Barrier. Established stratagem. Inadequate. Revise stratagem. Initiate Photonic Resonance Overcharge. Keep your eyes peeled. You again. I can't say I'm surprised. You and your ilk seem hell-bent on destroying everything our government has worked to achieve. There's nothing to stop me from killing you this time. Let's end this. I beg to differ. The Enclave is at the height of its power. Once this facility is operational, the masses will flock to the Enclave for fresh water, protection, and a plan for the future. You're in over your head, and no amount of talking is going to get you out of it. Once you're dead, we'll finish off this pathetic brotherhood and become the true saviors of the Wasteland. This ends now! That takes care of that. By now, the Pride should be mopping up whatever opposition is left outside. Let's get this room secured. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? It's Dr. Lee. Something's wrong with the purifier. Please, someone answer. Dr. Lee, it's Sarah Lyons. I'm in the control room. We're both here. What's going on? 
I've been monitoring your equipment remotely, and we have a serious problem. The facility has been damaged during the fighting. Some of it looks accidental, some of it may have been sabotage. There's pressure building up in the holding tanks. It needs to be released now, or else the whole facility could explode. To release the pressure, you're going to have to turn the purifier on. Do you understand me? It has to be turned on now! If I'm reading this right, I'm afraid there are lethal levels of radiation inside the chamber. I'm sorry. I wish there were some other way, but there's just no time. It has to be done now, or the damage will be catastrophic. Well, so much for celebrating. One of us is going to have to go in there and turn the damn thing on. And whoever does it isn't coming back out. Not exactly how I imagined going out, you know? So, what should we do? Draw straws? If that's how you want to do this, fine. But be quick about it. a dire predicament. What shall we do? Ah! Of course! Uh, my immunity to radiation makes me a far better candidate for surviving in there. I would say that your destiny lies within that chamber. But you have already altered mine. The least I can do is return the favor, cycle the airlock, and we'll put an end to this. needs to be activated now. You don't have much time left. And so it was that the Lone Wanderer ventured forth from Vault 101, intent on discovering the fate of a father who had once sacrificed the future of humanity for that of his only child. The Capital Wasteland proved a cruel, inhospitable place, but the Lone Wanderer refused to surrender to the vices that had claimed so many others. The values passed on from father to child. Selflessness, compassion, honor guided this noble soul through countless trials and triumphs. It was not until the end of this long road that the lone wanderer was faced with that greatest of virtues, sacrifice. But the child refused to follow the father's selfless example, instead allowing a true hero to venture into the irradiated control chamber of Project Purity. Thankfully, when selected by the sinister president to be his instrument of annihilation, the wanderer refused. Humanity, with all its flaws, was deemed worthy of preservation. The waters of life 
flowed at last, free and pure for any and all. The capital wasteland, at long last, was saved. So ends the story of the Lone Wanderer who stepped through the great door of Vault 101 and into the annals of legend. But the tale of humanity will never come to a close, for the struggle of survival is a war without end. And war... War never changes.